what's up welcome to my channel i want us to watch this video together and then we we'll get to listen to what this man is about to say about iqs now i have been following and wanting to understand what the white man think about iqs or think about intelligence wisdom okay the white man's perspective all right now let's let's click on this video and then we see postcard from south africa which i was very fortunate to be able to visit about a year and a half ago uh, the new south africa um it is a fascinating country when you arrive in johannesburg as i did uh, you see a very modern skyline. In fact, it's very uh, undifferentiable from any American city or Canadian city. The roads are big super highways and the motor cars are modern. Even the people on now the streets... Now, you see, he's showing a very nice picture. Part, um, but you see what he'll show about black people. Just North wait. Um, on the other hand, uh, South Africa is a city of... Uh, a country of contrasts. And there's a great deal of tradition. Now, this is what he's showing about black well. people, you see. Uh, about South, South Africa. Uh, it... Now let's pause this video and say something. This is nice, okay? Up, upon all the pictures in the world, this is what is representing South Africa. Yes, we are proud of it. I'm not a South African, but I'm proud. Of, proud I'm, I'm proud of my African identity. I'm an African. I'm from Ghana. Now this is, this is what he's showing to the people, okay? In a lecture wall, he's lecturing people. Can't he show? He's not even supposed to show this or anything. But if he choose to show, that is it. It's not a problem. Let's continue. It's because, um, now, this particular chart. Now this is a chart. IQ scores that now this is a chart about um, different races and how their iq is now on the bottom is africans with 70 percent um black people from us 85 um 100 for europeans and then um 106 for asians and this asians he's saying is um chinese japanese you Let's listen to what he has to say. Professor Richard Lynn alluded to in his talk, uh, based on his review, which was published in 1991, uh, East Asians, both here in the United States and Canada, as well as in their home continents, as Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans, average so Chinese, Japanese, a and higher Koreans. IQ than do white people. Uh, the average I have there is 100. They have. Sometimes you see the average is a little bit lower, around 103. Uh, whites average about 100. A few estimates may place it a little bit higher and say 103. Uh, black Americans average about 85. And again, uh, blacks in Canada or Britain or in the Caribbean average around 85 too, maybe slightly higher, up as high as 90. But it's the very far bar on that graph which, which has excited a lot of controversy, the IQ of 70. Because an IQ of 70 is the lowest IQ ever found in the world. And it's based on 20 or 30 different studies from East, South, West, and Central uh, Africa. And it really doesn't seem to change. Now, let's, let's pause and listen. Uh, he's saying Africa, not South, East and West, have an IQ of 70. That is, he said north, south, you, you heard him from the video, have an IQ of 70. Okay, let's continue. Even if you select the population to be studied from um, people in primary school, uh, people who've got jobs, people in urban centers, in other words, samples that might be thought to have a slightly higher IQ, um, the average of 70 to maybe 75 consistently comes out. When the bell curve was published in 1994, this really elevated uh, Richard Lynn's review to international... Okay. 
were um, outraged uh, and very, very critical. In fact, they trashed uh, the bell curve in my own book, uh, partly because we uh, discussed as a serious piece of data the average IQ of 70. Indeed, uh, some members who of the academic community who were in favor of the bell curve uh, decided that this was an embarrassment to their perspective. They actually argued something like, look, uh, perhaps within the academic and intelligentsia circles of America, with the bell curve behind us, we just might be able to convince people that uh, IQ is a predictive variable, that it's partly heritable, that there is a black-white difference for whatever reason. But how on earth are we ever going to make headway when there are these extremists like Richard Lynn and uh, Phil Rushton and depending on which side they got out of the bed that morning, uh, Charles Murray and Arthur Jensen, who actually take this seriously, that the Africans have an IQ as low as 70 to 75. Um, I should put it into context. If white people in, Can in Canada or the United States have an IQ of 70, this is considered borderline mentally retarded. Okay, let so, me pause this video. According to him, if you have an IQ of 70, that is the white standard you are retarded all right and now the whole continent of africa that is only the black people not not the whites not the arabs okay only the black people have an iq of 70. okay let's continue to 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 um label an entire continent as having an average IQ of 70, in which case 50% of the African population fall below an IQ of 70. 50% of the African continent, by white standards, is mentally retarded, is the sort of uh, preposterous sounding um, rhetoric that uh, academics have to face. So what's the cause of that IQ of 70? Can it be real? or is it somehow false? So I went to South Africa essentially in search of a high IQ African population. I decided I really needed for my own sake to at least satisfy um, myself as to what the true, or well, what the true African IQ score was. Had Richard Lynn underestimated um, the African IQ? So I searched for a top university within Johannesburg um, some of my colleagues were arguing and saying, uh, look, we know there are many top African students at Harvard and Berkeley and Stanford or Oxford and Cambridge in England, or even at top-notch uh, universities in South Africa. Boy, if you could only test their IQs, uh, you'd find that they were just as bright or almost as bright as uh, the genius level uh, physicists in North America. Uh, so I went to um, South Africa to look for um, uh, a high IQ group. I teamed up with um, a group of people uh, who shall still remain anonymous until the article is actually published in about three months time. Uh, we had um, Africans and Cape Coloreds as well as our assistants uh, for those who uh, actually do these tests and so on. It's sometimes considered that test takers need to be tested by members of their own race and so on. Um, we can have the next one. Uh, I, I went to South Africa myself, rather than let my collaborators collect the data. Okay, wait, I don't want to bore you with this long video, but all, all in all, they're going to do, they're going to redo the test according to him, and then still Africans had an IQ of 70. Okay, if you want to watch the video, this is the title, search on YouTube, in search of a high IQ African population. Do Africans really have an IQ of 70? So if you go on YouTube, you can actually watch the whole video. But I just want to make things short. So I'm not going to bore you with this long video. So my question is, in Africa, what is our form of education? Do we study in our own languages? Or in foreign languages do we study in our own languages or foreign languages
Now, what this professor, this so-called professor, I don't know what he is, whether he's an expert or whatever, what he has forgotten is, in Africa, we have our own language, right? We have our own customs, everything. Our way of thinking is different. But on top of it all, we study the white man's way of thinking too. All right? Now, if he or them are going to take an IQ test, do they test it in our way? Or they test it to satisfy their way of thinking? That's my question. Of course, somebody from Europe or wherever, he's thinking and an African man thinking is not the same. We don't all think the same. We think different from them because we live, they have, dif their way of seeing things are different. Their environment is different. Their weather is different. They have snow, they have whatever. In Africa, we don't have snow, right? They have skyscrapers and all this. They have all that, right? So their way of thinking is not the same. Just the same as somebody from the city and someone from a town or the countryside. They don't all think the same. Even if they are all Americans, trust me, they don't think the same. It doesn't make one brilliant or intelligent more than the other. In a nutshell, a man's IQ should be measured with his interaction with nature, which most of these people will fail because most of them, people like this, doesn't even know that, doesn't even know how his peanuts, which he likes very well, his peanut butter or whatever, what they use in bread, he don't even know how it comes from. He doesn't even know how the plant is grown. All right? Now, if he is going to come to Africa, and I sit him down, and I'm going to make an IQ test with him, and then I test him according to my way of thinking, do you think this guy is going to pass? With all his education and all that paper he has gotten from school? Look at me, I speak English, all right? But I'm not English, okay? I'm a fully proud black person from Africa. How did I learn English? If I have a low IQ or I'm mentally retarded. I speak about six languages. All right, I speak Arabic too. I speak three or four languages from my place. I learned all this from my local school. I didn't go to a top-notch school. Or, no, no, no. I didn't go to American school or british school i went to a local a village school in fact i'm from a village i'm not from a town or a city no i'm from a village but i learned everything just by reading and everything so what i'm trying to say is in this world we are supposed to be like them okay so that they will measure our intelligence according to their way of thinking not the vice versa we are not going to measure them because I know, for example, if I'm going to measure this guy on how I think, he will never pass even one, even one. Africans, we've scored, we have, we are able to score about 70, but this guy will not pass even one when it comes to Africa because they don't know anything about Africa. They don't know anything. They have imposed their culture, their, their tradition, their way of education. They, they control the way we are supposed to speak and all that. Fine, that's okay. We are learning. What about them? What do they know about us? Europeans don't know anything about Africa. All they think all, or all they want to show the world is Africa tribes, Africa animals, Africa drought, Africa starvation, Africa, name it, war. That's all they want to show. Or some group of apes, wild aggressive people that's all they want to show Africans are nobody they are not intelligent because they are black people living for me I'm, I don't have anything about racism I don't I'm not I'm not programmed to think that way program because I, I didn't grow up in the West or maybe in Europe or something then I'll think I'll be thinking about no I don't have that mind okay but these people people like this and he's even lecturing people you understand and nobody I, I don't know the whole video i don't know whether they were not allowed to ask questions nobody asked him did you take them okay 
the exams was that you're supposed to mark some boxes you check the one that is not present you mark around it i don't know how they think they did the exam and i didn't see the marks and all that but all i'm trying to say is it was not the way africans think okay you give me a paper and then you tell me to you know uh what just take an exam okay now if i learn something like if i go to school and then i learn something obviously i'm gonna what give back the answer that i've been taught right if i give you something different that means i'm dumb i'm stupid because you are expecting me to give you what you what, what you've taught me that is their way of thinking have they ever just one time think like sit down and then think about how africans think out there in the desert how do you survive i bet if this guy is going to live in my country for a month his way of thinking is going to change because he will not think about ice uh, sorry snow and all that he will be thinking he will start to think about how to go to farm how to live off the land and all that he will not think and he will be more family oriented because most of these people don't even care about family probably maybe his mother is somewhere in an old people's shelter they kick their family out their mothers when they are old or their fathers when they are old they don't have family you know they don't have family when once the person is old they kick their uh, they kick the old person out person who give i can never do that to my mom my mother lives with me in my in my in my language you have a saying that your mother will take care of you so that your teeth will grow so that you also pay her back by taking care of her so that her teeth will what uproot or her teeth will fall off in a nutshell it's very simple your mother will take care of you and you will pay her back but these people most of them they have places where they keep their old people now that is a high iq person this person this person i don't want to talk about other things but this is what they do or you are programmed to go to school and get a job all right and then you become somebody's slave work for the corporate government or the corporate industries then you have a good iq that is it they just don't they just forget that people think differently that's what they forget of i don't know what he is but looking at his dressing you can see that he have a tie just a person with an a high iq what is this tie just tell me the function of a tie a bow tie nothing for fashion right now in africa in a hot desert uh, in a hot place if you put on this we just laugh at you because it's very hot you don't even need this all right so everybody and the, and the way they think i was born in africa proudly african i know how i think what i think about is family hmm? family food shelter survival that's all i don't worry about anything i'm not greedy okay peace